28. In fact, verse 27 says, For I'm not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take ye therefore to yourselves and all the flock, for which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Be the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Lord Jesus, yes. thank you for every family represented here. Thank you for those who are not here and wish to be here, but their lives have been so in situations that prevent them. We pray for the people beyond this microphone, our community, and those in charge of the community, Lord. For them we also pray that they may be a part of their possession. In Jesus' name. God bless you. You may be seated. I'm going to tell you up front right now in your Bible, on the one time the word Easter is used, it's not used in reference to God. It's the pagan gods that were the Roman system. But that does not prevent me from talking about God yes. in Christ Jesus. Amen. And my title for today is The Great Transaction. They asked me, what are you going to speak about today? I said, it's the great transaction. As I was complaining about the Lord this morning in this service, it crossed my mind. The bank where we give your blood to the donor, it's called the blood bank. It's called a bank. And when you speak of a bank, to me, it's a place where you deposit money. You deposit certified checks. Things of great value. Amen. They wanted to put their money away and they purchased possession money from the bank. And we call it a blood bank. That means blood has purchasing power. It can bring life back to somebody who was yes. ebbing away yes, amen. for loss of blood. We were on a ship and I heard a cry came across. They're going to come. We need a donor type O. A universal type of donor. And come with your credentials to prove that you are such a type. Mm -hmm. They would not accept the word of a person. They could not just take the blood and just pump it in another individual. Right. It could mean instant death. It had to be the wrong, the right blood type, right. the right category. Amen. Not all blood are the same blood. Mm -hmm. And Israel was taught there's a blood of heifers and goats and bulls, and they cannot give life to Adam fallen race. It's not possible. And Peter put it this way: notice that the bank aspect is in our mind. He said, "Look, I want you to know that you church." And the Australian pilgrims on earth were not purchased with such things as silver and gold or such corruptible transactionary currency, but by the precious blood of Jesus Christ as of a lamb. He's talking to people who understand the price of redemption. To be redeemed, it had to be a king's man redeemer. Just anybody could walk up and say, I'm going to redeem Trevor Neal. No. They had to have a blood relationship before they could come and redeem me. That's why God could not choose angels to redeem us. That's right. He did not take on the nature of angels because we're not related. Amen. We're not blood brothers. Mm -hmm. But he had to go back to the one that breathed into the nostril of Adam and Eve and they're related by breath he breathed in their nostril the life that was in Christ was in them and there's a there's a DNA that tells you if you're a living person or a dead person and I was talking this morning about the forensic report forensic expert will go back to scientific instrumentation and they'll go backtrack on a person's life 
And they'll tell you what time, what place, what situation existed before they died. And that forensic report have saved some lives right. and have also condemned some lives. Right. Very, very important. My Bible is a forensic report. Yes. Amen. Who hath believed yes. our report? Yes. And to who hath the hand of the Lord been revealed? Right. I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I believe Amen. the law and the prophets yes. and the song. Yes. I believe the scripture. For in them I know I have eternal life. Yes. And I know also the scripture cannot be broken. And I know we don't need philosophers. I don't have to learn Greek and right. Hebrew Amen. or Latin to understand the word of God. Yes. Right. As Amen. long as there's a revelation yes. and divine illumination Amen. and a spirit inspiration, I can get what I need Amen. from the Lord. Yes. For God said, search the scripture. Yes. For them you think you have eternal life. Yes. And they testify of me. I'm so glad the law and the prophet and the Psalms is about one person, yes. not persons, yes. but yes. one individual person. Yes. And Jesus Christ said, they testify of me. Yes. And if you believe Moses' writing yes. of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, yes. yes. Deuteronomy, yes. and you stop right there. Yes. Then you believe of me also. Right. Amen. 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 Clap to the Lord. Paul yes. oh, is telling the Gentiles that they were purchased, purchased. with the blood yes. of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Now somebody please tell me, uh -huh. how can a spirit right. give blood? Right. Mm. Mm -hmm. When they doubt the standing presence of the Lord after the resurrection, he said, flesh and bones, yes. amen, does not look like a spirit. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now I'm going to tell you up front, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. If nothing else is said this morning, I'm going to tell you right now. If your Bible changes wording, I'm going to advise you to get rid of the Bible. Yes, amen. Right. Amen. You don't want a Bible that contains the Word of God. Amen. Right. You want a Bible that is the Word of God. Yes, right. Amen. I don't want it containing. Right. I want it to be it. Yes. Or nothing else. Yes. And Acts 1 8. Is the greatest testimony you ever have in your life in confirmation and by forensic report that Jesus Christ is not dead, right. yes. but he's alive yes. and well. Yes. He shall receive power. power. Yes. Amen. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. What? That's telling you. Do not take the translator's knife or scribe's knife or pen or ink or eraser and God does not want you to change the word Holy Ghost right. to Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hello. Amen. Hello. Amen. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And I... I'm provoked by the Holy Ghost right now to say this to you. I hope it doesn't confuse you. When Ananias and Sapphira lied to Peter, Peter said, why did you lie? You didn't lie to a man, you lied to the Holy Ghost. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Next verse says, you lied to the Spirit. Yes. Come on. God has not used those words interchangeably. He didn't say you lie to the Holy Ghost if you're going to drop dead. But she dropped dead and he dropped dead. We say you lie to the Spirit. Right. The Spirit, amen, is different in administration. Right. Right. The Holy Ghost is redemptive. Right. Yes, amen. 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 Yes. It was not the Holy Ghost that created us, it was God, Holy Spirit. Right. He breathed the Spirit into us. Right. Amen. He said, well, what are we talking about? <laughs> if you change the word Holy Ghost, you are literally denying the resurrection. Right. Amen. 
Not one of you in this building was born a ghost. Right. You better not be one right now. <laughs> oh, you're in the wrong location. You ought not to be here. I'll tell you what you are right now. You're a living spirit. Yes. 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 Amen. Your body, soul, and spirit. Right. And by the way, God can spell words if he wants to. That's right. He can spell ghost mm -hmm. and spirit if he wants to. That's right. Amen. So you can't teach God how to speak. <laughs> and if you want language you speak, God knows the difference between a ghost right. and a spirit. Right. Amen. Amen. When they saw Jesus walking in the water, what did they thought? They saw no that's what I said, a ghost. <laughs> and he said, No, 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 don't, don't do that, it's me. I step in that boat. The apostles believe in ghosts. And they also be in spirit. Well, Pastor, you're mincing words. No, I'm not. The only way I can be purchased by the blood of the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. is had to have reference to the man, Christ, Christ Jesus. Amen. 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 You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Turn with me. First Timothy, our first John 3.16. Read what it says. It said very clearly, God. Lay down his life for us. Now, one guy said to me one time, Pastor, I'm confused. I ain't come back to church. This does not make sense. He says, how can God die? God can't die. You're right, God can't die. But he who was God died. Ooh. Well, you know, this, this bothers me. It's called the mystery of godliness. Right. <laughs> God, mystery being veiled. You can't understand it until God revealed it to you. God was manifested in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Now that scripture reading there, 1 John 3, 16, is an explanation for John 3, 16. Mm -hmm. Now I don't need the concordance to figure that out. And I don't need to change the word of God to explain that. I'm going to go right to the Bible. The same writer of St. John 3.16, the same writer of 1 John 3.16. Right. And that tells me, Apostle Paul and John do the same thing. Now, Jesus Christ took up some grape juice for the vine and said to his disciples, this is my blood that was shed for the New Testament. For you. Now, folks, please, let's do a forensic report on that blood, that thing. It's not blood. It is fruit of the vine. And he said, from this day on, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine with you. Until I do it anew in the millennium of the marriage supper. Hello? Every time we do communion, you may not know it, but you are confessing either as a liar or as truthful that there is a resurrection. Right. Mm -hmm. For as often as you do this, yes. you're showing for his death. Yes. Amen. But don't stop there. And you're showing for his coming yes. because he had to be back the life to come back. That's right. There'll be no coming if there's no resurrection. That's right. That's right. You need to say he would come back. He never came back. Hello? Amen. The only way he could come a second time, he had to raise from the dead because he was certified dead. The soldiers said he was dead. The earthquake said he was dead. The moon at midday turned, I mean, the sun at midday turned midnight. Said he was dead. Yes. Pilate says he was dead. Yes. They took down the dead body so you can't say he wasn't dead. Amen. Amen. And the master, he gave him the ghost. Right. Mm -hmm. Hello? Amen. So my question is what happened to the two? They made sure the, the, the gate to the to the tomb was thicker than your thigh. You can't roll away. 
and you can't roll up noise being made that would garrison the soldiers right there. You can't pass those soldiers. And you can't push that stone away. You don't have the strength of the men power, and the first one that comes through sees the soldier to do that. And the seal of the king. But how is it that the stone was rolled away? Two girls couldn't do it. Mary and her friends couldn't do it. Amen. Amen. But the Bible said, hallelujah, when the stone got finally rolled away, there's nobody in there. Hello? Yes, amen. He didn't just vaporize him. <sighs> but there's evidence of a transaction that took place in that tomb. Right. He left behind a Jewish well-known tradition, the napkin. That napkin is an evidence of a transaction that took place. Paul himself called the Holy Ghost given to us evidence of a transaction. After you believe, you are sealed with the Holy Ghost, which is the earnest money of transaction. Ephesians 1.13 When I speak with tongues, it's my evidence that I have a transaction in, in view. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1.13 says, it's the earnest of the inheritance. When I go to buy a car, I don't want a down payment. Right. Hello? Oh, well, there is no transaction. The Holy Ghost is not all there is to our salvation. But it's evidence of a transaction. First, he paid with his blood. A testament, the attestator. And the testator must be dead first before a testament can have force. In other words, if I made you a wolf of my house, you can't claim the house while I'm alive. Right. You have to wake up dead. Right. Certified dead. And then the executor can go take it and give it to whom I said. And the Holy Ghost cannot be given until Christ depart from us. But he shall receive the comforter. When he come, he'll come in my name He'll speak of me. But if I go not away, if I don't die, there will be no comforter. But if I go away, or if I die, I will come again. Come again. Amen. And the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, yes. which will come in my name. He hmm. said, what's there with the Holy Ghost? Ghost? No. Ghost is the form in which he comes in. Right. But the ghosts have a name. Yes. Every spirit has a name. Huh? Satan's name is actually a Lucifer. Mm -hmm. But his alias is Satan and the devil. Mm -hmm. And the dragon. So in other words, when I have communion, I'm confessing that Jesus came, died, rose again, came back again. That's my evidence. Otherwise, don't take it. You're part of the line. When you said, I just received the Holy Ghost, you're confessing, I've just been bought. I've just been purchased. Because the Holy Ghost is a purchase possession used to purchase that individual. It's the earnest of a, his inheritance. Hello? And so the question is, now, I talked with Muslim before when I go to the airport. I'll speak on them and have a little discussion with them. And they'll tell me that Jesus only fake death on the cross. They didn't really crucify him. And number two, he didn't die for the sins of the world because it's not right for one man to die for the sins of many. It doesn't make sense in their law system. And that Jesus Christ was not dead and he never resurrected. And friend, what they're teaching is not new. It's just another religion teaching what was always believed by those who detracted from Jesus Christ. But in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, if you are a Christian this morning, that chapter shall have a whole other meaning to you, friend, because that explains very clearly what is about to happen in the church in the next few days. This church is about to experience a divine transformation and a transportation that can only take place if you are a purchased possession. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Amen. You don't take home what you don't purchase. Right. right amen. When my wife go to the, to the store, I know she walk around with all these things in her, in, in her in the basket and all that, but I keep her eye on my wife, not because she's a thief, but I don't want to walk up with anything she didn't pay for <laughs> and get arrested. Because I could not prove to them that what it meant to steal it. Hello? So I walk the house and say, did you pay for this? And make sure that she don't go through that checkout counter. I mean, go outside around it because obviously she paid for everything. And sometimes the buzzer goes off. I said, honey, did you pay? She said, yes, I did. Well, you know, your buzzing going out. And have a search. Perfect fear doesn't regard search. Go ahead, search. There's nothing there. I got no fear. Amen. Without fear, I can understand church. Now, church, read one more time. Ephesians 1 13. After you believe, you are sealed. Right. You're not just talking in tongues. You're not just feeling a, you know, a chill running down your spine. You've just been purchased. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. A transaction. Just took place. For if any man have not the spirit of Jesus Christ, he is none of his possession. I don't know you. I don't own you. And when the wife's come back, Malachi told us, he's come by to collect his jewels. And you don't leave your jewels behind. Unless what you have is a faith. Now, friend. We are not going to be reincarnated. No. Amen. We won't be reincarnated. We won't be that type of pain to look something different. We won't uh, uh, be a transvestite or, or become some kind of knife. No. But there are some people in the name of Jesus Christ who taught that there is no resurrection. Sadducees. They said, Lord, this guy had, this guy had seven husbands. And uh, they all died. First of all, if I was number three, I would marry the girl because she always seemed to survive the husbands. You know, so obviously she don't survive me either. But they're all done. They married her and they all died. I left her alone. And she found us out to die. Instead of marrying the eighth guy, she died before the eighth guy. That's Amen. And so they said, now in the resurrection, who's going to own that wife? Uh, that's, that's a good question for Muslims to think about. Because they believe if they die, martyrdom, they are going to marry how many virgins? A whole bunch. I want to know what happened to a virgin or a woman when she died, martyrdom. Who does she marry? Good question, isn't it? Who does she marry? Another, another virgin? I don't think so. Hello? But no one thought about that. But the Bible says, he said, you do err not know the scripture or the power of God. For in the resurrection, they don't marry and they don't divorce. Right. Nor are given in marriage. But they are like the angels. That means there is no marriage in heaven except one. That's right. The lambs and the uh, lamb and his wife. Mm -hmm. The only marriage going to be. The lamb and his wife. And the wife is called the church. Right. Because the church is the bride of Christ. Yes. Amen. And he purchased her at Calvary. Amen. And other groups say, well, oh yes, I'm the resurrection. Well, we die, you know. You die before as a private, you come as a general. Not true. Not true. And so all that fossil went on. And then another group rose up and said, you know what? The resurrection, I believe in it, but it's past. And overthrew the faith of a lot of Christians. So the devil will use anything to deceive us. Yes. And then the Jews have this little lies going around. Oh, the resurrection. There is no resurrection. The apostles stole the body. And they lie about the fact that Christ is missing from the grave. You didn't vaporize. Hello. Christ is either risen or he's rotten in the grave. Which one is he? If he's rotten in the grave, then he saw corruption. 
But my Bible says, he shall see no corruption. It was not possible that this Holy One should see corruption. So his body all rotten on the grave. Worms are on the feet on it. Hello? But the Bible says he'll be missing from the grave. Now, if Christ raised up from the dead, then everybody in this church, you're wasting your effort coming here this morning. Jesus is not the first guy to die. The first guy to die, read the fifth chapter of the book of Genesis. A man died naturally, including Abel. Abel was murdered, but the rest died naturally. Hello? But everybody died. All died. All died. Everybody died. Including Jesus. Mohammed died. Krishna died. Hello? And all the gods they have, they all died. So that's a big revelation. Well, nobody's surprised. If you tell me that Jack died tomorrow, he's probably going to be surprised. I may be surprised he died so young, but the fact that he died is no mystery. But if you tell me Jack died three days ago and came back the, the fifth day, I'm going to be surprised. Yes. Right, amen. Yes. I'm going to want to see that body. Yes. Right. I want to make sure the same guy I know. Yes. Right. One guy, he had died as a criminal and a terrible. And the pastor, you know, to bear his body. And the guy said, uh, the brother said, Pastor, you have a hard time seeing anything good about this man. He was a terrible, rotten guy. You know it. He said, Well, I'll do the best God will love you to do. He says, At the funeral, the session, he, he spoke of the guy's life. But he says, Let's call him Brother Jack. He said, This guy was terrible, bad. Very bad, but you know one thing is sure. He's a whole lot better than Jack. So he did say something good about him. He said, You can't say something good about him. He said, Yes, I can. I'm going to tell the people that at least he was better than you. Now, church, this to me tonight, today, in the 15th chapter, you gotta read it for yourself, but I gotta to talk to you about it. There we find the apostle Paul having to help some Christians who's waiting for the coming of the Lord like you and me. If he's dead, he can't come back. Hello? But to prove to you at the power of a death of the grave, he called Lazarus from the dead. To prove he can't do it impromptuly, the woman, even in name, who suddenly died, he went there and touched the comfort. Stopped the procession. They didn't make it to the cemetery. Because they met Jesus. Right. And Jesus woke up in the line and came back to his mother. Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. Took Lazarus out of the dragon's bosom and brought him back to Mary. Now, they said others he can save, but himself he cannot save. Watch him do it. Mm -hmm. Because in the grave he said, no man took my life, but I lay it down. Right. Mm -hmm. And who raised him from the dead? He said, destroy this body in the three days. Ah! Well, one place of the Father will, one place of the Holy Ghost will, one the Son will, but which one did? Right. <clears throat> and let's all three are the same. I will raise it up. And every Christian, I'll tell you right now, the reason why you're in this church, you know you're going to die. Mm -hmm. but that's not why you're here. You're hoping you tell the truth. He <laughs> says, if you believe on me, Though you may be dead, ye shall live again. Amen. That's the hope of this church. Right. The whole purpose Amen. of singing, yes. having a quiz theme and choir oh. and playing the organ and playing the music is that we hope that we have eternal life. Yes. And if he can't raise himself, he sure can't help me. That's right. Amen. 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 If there is no resurrection of Jesus, the man Christ Jesus, then is Christ not risen? And if that's so, then is my preaching to you vain? Then are the apostles false witnesses of God? I'm asking you to think about it. Then is my faith in God and the doctrine of the Bible in vain? Have I yet in my sins? I've been baptized in Jesus Christ's name. 
on, 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 the, on, the, on the platitude that I, my sins are remitted and they're gone. Yes. That's why I'm here. No. I'm here because I believe that when a saint died, some for martyrdom, that their death was not in vain. He told them, die, and I'll give you life eternal. If Jesus Christ promises it's not true, we've been the most biggest fools ever since God made man. Right. You've been the dumbest person that ever could be because you believe that and you're going to live again. Mm -hmm. You believe waiting for a rapture that won't show up is not the girl waiting for Mr. Wright as she set on that park base all her life and she became a fossil and Mr. Wright didn't show up. She finally died from a broken heart. Hey, the church will not die for a broken heart for a cry through faith to deliver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are not still in our sins. Right. Our sin is not just forgiven, it's remitted. It's remitted. I want to tell some of the friend, my father and mother's dead. They didn't die in vain. They died believe they will live again. Right. On the basis of the resurrection yeah. of a man called yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And then to purchase possession. He paid a price to guarantee that I can live again. Amen. Jesus Christ came and answered the question of John chapter 14. If a man die, shall he live again? And the answer from the lips of Jesus is absolutely. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. If you hear the Son of Man's voice in John chapter 5, you will live again. Amen. Hallelujah. And so all who slept in Christ, they died not hopeless, but they died with hope. I was thinking last week, God said, don't sorrow as others who have no hope. We're forbidden to cry when I say that God dies because you're wasting your tears. Because they're absent from their body, but they're present with the Lord. Right, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As long as we're in this earth of tabernacle, we're absent from him. But when we leave this earth of tabernacle, we are present with him. Because he said, where I am, not where I was, where I am, there I am. Come on now. Church, do you believe this? Yeah. I'm trying to tell you, the whole purpose of coming to church at Sunday morning, yeah. Sunday night, and Tuesday about the prayer yes. meeting is because of this blessed hope. Blessed yeah. Amen. Amen. The most terrible thing to happen. This man left his dog in the airport and didn't show up, and the dog almost died from a broken heart. Mm -hmm. He was in the paper. <laughs> the master never returned. Hello. Can you imagine Jesus Christ never showing up? Oh my. Oh my. All who slept in Christ would be hopeless if what I'm teaching is wrong. Mm -hmm. Your baptism, we just got wet. And I told you that he will come again for you. You believe that? Then, my friend, you bought into a, a lie. And oh, a myth or a mystery. Which one is going to be? Church, I want you to know that, that Jesus' death was not just ordinary. Because when he died, he was wounded in five places. And each of those places was, a, was the transaction of God. God is making a transaction that will never, amen, be the same again in our world. It was the means of, of purchasing. That's why I can tell the devil, you can't have me, Satan. I'm a purchased yes. possession. Yes. I belong to a king yes. that, was, that purchased me. Hallelujah. Yes. Not with silver and gold. Yes. The rapture is not a myth. It may be a mystery, but it's not a myth, my friend. Yes. It's going to happen. From a resurrected Christ. If there is no resurrected Christ, there will be no rapture. If there is no rapture, then the whole thing is a hoax. Yes. But today I'm telling you, friend, Jesus Christ had power over death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Yes. Death does not hold no terror for the child of God. I want to tell the child of God, my friend, in you, Johnson, that you may know that you have. Eternal life. That was in the Son. 
It's also in the Son of God. When he gave you the Holy Ghost, it's a purchased possession. I want you right on your shoulder. I'm not for sale. I'm taken. I belong to a owner. Hallelujah. God revealed to me the treasure in the field is the believer. The pearl of the great price is the one who's sanctified. Amen. God said, he paid a price. He sold all to buy it. Yes. Yes. I didn't come cheap. I didn't come cheap. This isn't a myth. Jesus Christ, amen, he abolished death and the grave. I preached one time the death of death. <laughs> In chapter 20, Revelation, where God says he threw death into death. Him and abolished it. If in Christ only we have life in this earth, only church, you are the most miserable person. I'm going to take a stop, turn the other cheek, roll your fist up, and fight back. Because that's all you're going to get. <laughs> Hallelujah. Martyrdom for Christ, amen, is not foolish waste. No, my friend, it's the seed of the church. Yes. Can you clap your hand? In the first Adam, all die. Right. Look in the mirror. Five days, and you smell like a skunk. <laughs> you don't believe it? Don't take long to have flesh to rot. Yeah, right. But the 15th chapter of Corinthians says, I give up the corruptible for the incorruptible. It only happened after the resurrection. Amen. I get my earthly thing for my heavenly. Maybe that don't mean much to you guys. That's what made backsliding so hard. If you got revelation, it's hard to backslide. Amen. You know why? Because you know that you're giving them something that the world can't give right. and the world can't buy and the world shouldn't take away. Amen. I've got a possession. I've got something that the world, even if there was no streets of gold, I've got eternal life. I've got rights to the tree of life. How? Because Jesus walked out of that tomb, walked back to the room where the upper room was, and breathe on them and said, Blessed are they that believe on me through your teaching, through your word. And Thomas said, My Lord and my God, to Thomas you're blessed, but the people in Macbury could be a whole lot more blessed than you are because they have not seen, yet they believe. How many believe this morning that Jesus is alive? He's well and he's coming again and he's got power to reach it. I'm not miserable being a Christian. No, my friend. I don't fear death because death don't have to sting for a child of God. Amen. 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 You know, you tell a caterpillar, go back to the cocoon. You have the right to fly around here. <laughs> Whenever you see a butterfly, remember this, he was not born first a, a butterfly. Right. He became one. Amen. He went through a death process. I don't need your help. Praise God. Maybe a struggle. But I'm going to survive. I'm going to go someplace I couldn't go before. Before he had to content to just crawl. But one of these days I'm going to fly out of this body. Hallelujah. I'm going to fly out of this body. Yes, amen. No chicken can come pick me up with a beak. Right. I'm going to fly behind their knees. Yes, Come on, somebody. Yes. And the Bible says, the fear of death is gone. Yes. Right. Now, Satan wants you to believe a lie. Say want to believe that Jesus Christ did not come from the dead. Now, church, you say, well, Pastor, it's a long time ago. Every time you talk in tongues, a miracle just happened. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We got scholars who want me to learn Greek and Hebrew. So I said in my Bible, church, I tell you, it would take me a lifetime and I won't last that long. <laughs> to learn Greek and Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. It took me 60 years to try to speak English, and I'm still trying to speak English. <laughs> still missing up my grammar, my verbs, and my adjectives, and my pronouns. Much more all, all the, the verbs that's in Greek and Hebrew. I want to tell you, friend, Christ is the first fruit of them that slept. You know what I mean? Now, most of you guys didn't buy this book at the conference, but you missed it. You know why? Because it didn't suggest what's in there. 
Pentecost, past, present now, and future. Most of you don't know, and many preachers don't know, number one, it's wrong and it's illegal to change the word Holy Ghost to Holy Spirit. It is a denial of the death and resurrection of Jesus. That's right. Amen. I said, what they tell you? It's, if you're about to change those words, they're wrong. Right. And if you go to Acts 20 28 and change that, you've got a false Bible. you got false doctrine. Read about what it does to the water. Go, go read one more time. Because I'm, I'm, I'm pulling the mask off Satan. I'm showing you he changed the word. And the word is Jesus Christ. He hates the reality of the resurrection. Yes. You know what? Because God's going to bruise his head, yes. not before, but only after the resurrection. Yes. The bruising come afterwards. If there is no resurrection, there will be no bruising of Satan's head. Right. Now what did your Bible say? Is it the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost? I'm asking you to be honest. You're deceiving yourself. What did it say? Turn to Acts 38. What did it say? For remission of sin or forgiveness of sin. If your master forgives of sin, they lie to you. They are telling you that Christ didn't come. Because remission of sins only is possible only after resurrection. Right. You see, I don't believe that. You see, you see, you think I'm wasting my time talking to you. I'm talking deep theology from the Bible to you. He said, He came from the dead. Then he said, Thus it is written, and thus it will Christ to die to suffer and to come from the dead. And that yes. repentance and remission of sins. Sorry, the preacher's name. Notice one. What do your Bible say? What do your Bible say? Remission or for forgiveness? Mine says remission. Because remission is confirmation that he resurrected. Luke 24, 44, tell you that. You see, the pastor don't believe that. A lot of folk can be shot by their judgment. Mm -hmm. You believe a lie. The soul changed of Satan. And here I am today, wasting your time taking all these details. Get rid of that Bible fast. Because mm -hmm. there's a whole lot more lies in there. Yes. Satan threw tears in that Bible. Remission of sin was not possible until the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Without the shedding of his blood, there is no what? They always had forgiveness, but never had remission. Is that too deep? Well, Pastor... That's why your church will never fill up. That's right. If you're going to make it in. Hello. Now, Christ had to die for our sins. I don't die for my sins. I died from sins. He died for my sins. I died to my sins. Christ. He was buried with my sins. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm buried with him like he was. But you don't stay down there. Huh? The only name that is <laughs> vicarious to deal with sin is not Jehovah. In Africa, all this is Jehovah, Jehovah. We said, God's where are you going to leave the Old Testament and teach the New Testament? His Old Testament name is Jehovah. Jehovah forgave sins. Jehovah does not remit sins. Oh, shocking. Christ on earth up to this point forgave sins. When did Jesus Christ remit sins? After the resurrection. Hmm. Well, this is Easter, isn't it? I want to ask you a question. What does rabbit have to do with Easter? What does egg have to do with it? And bunny? 
Come on. Come on, you tell me now. What? It's paganism. That's right. Come on. Amen. That's right. And paint to the edge. Yes, amen. And hold up more. Amen. How are we going to teach the gospel? Come on, yes. Our gossips of philosophy. What do you want me to teach? What should I preach? I'm telling the details of the Lord. The first fruit of them that slept mean the resurrection. When a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. You are not called to be a dead sacrifice. You're called to be a living sacrifice. Amen. Romans 12, 1. I'm the Bible. Yeah. I am preaching truth. Yeah. I'm not telling you a fair stand. I'm telling a true story. Amen. Christ is the only man that came from the dead alive. Amen. Buddha died. Egyptian king died. American president died. Canadian president died. Communist died. Hitler died. Amen. Mohammed died. Yes. Elam died. But Jesus from high. Yes. 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 Oh, praise God. You, you say, well, did he die? Yes. The empty cross, the empty tomb, the napkin, the angel testimony, the store rolled away, the soul's testimony. Come on, somebody. The lies of the Jews and the writing of the epistles. Mm -hmm. Now, folks, resurrection happened in three stages. Let me, let me blow you into the water now. And you won't hear from any pastor or You won't hear from TV or radio. You'll hear tonight, today, on this church, but it's in the Bible. The resurrection takes place in three, in three divine categories, divine order. Number one, the first order is Christ from the dead. First fruit of anybody that slept. Slept means from Abel up to the time of Christ. God knows the Christian die till they sleep. <coughs> so you don't confuse the two operations. Oh, are you with me? Yes. Christ the first fruit. Why? That he may have preeminence in all things. He for a taste. Hello, mouth, my mouth. When you feed your kid before they got some teeth, you, you know you feed them breastfeed first, and then you chew it and give it to them, and until they got their own teeth, it's time for them to do it on their own. They transfer to them. Hello. And the next few church, I'm, I'm hurrying up here. I'm just going to lay with Tim for a while here. Because you know what? Someone's going to be dead this year. That's right. Where will you end up? Mm -hmm. Who will you spend eternity? One second after you die, you don't end up hell or heaven. That's right. And Christ makes the difference. Amen. And the Bible should know. Then Pentecost started with Jews. They are the first fruit of the Jewish nation being grafted into the building of the church. Yes, amen. For the last five, six years, Jews only were saved, no Gentiles. Mm -hmm. They were the kind of first fruit to God from the Jewish nation. Mm -hmm. Other nations are not included. They're excluded. Mm -hmm. And then church, they brought in the Gentiles. You know what you and I are? We're the first fruit of the Gentile faith. The final rapture of the church is when Moses and Elijah, hello, in Revelation, are going to be the closing of the first resurrection. The rapture is the final closure. Hello. Once that gone, there will be only one more resurrection left. It's called the second resurrection. It's coming to a close. What does that mean, church? It means if you miss the first one, death and hell has power over you. Yes. Amen. That's right. You're not found in that book. Come on. Oh, life. All your confession and profession is hopeless. Mm -hmm. If your name is not in that book of life, you're lost. But it says those in the first resurrection, by the way, you know resurrect living saints, so called rapture. Right. You know rapture dead saints. It's impossible. You resurrect dead saints. Right. But you rapture living saints. That's right. 
Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Well, Pastor, that word is not in the Bible. You're correct. He said, shall be translated. Shall be changed in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, going up in a change. Yes, amen. You hear me now? You resurrect dead people and you rapture life people. That's right. There's a difference. Amen. This church, you know, talk about that hope. In church, I don't think we're too far away. That's right. Now, I told you how close I think we are. Oh, yeah. This generation is going to close in 2018. Our church is going to close for prophecy with Israel. After that, anything can happen. Nobody knows the day or the hour when the church will be taken away. But once the church is gone, it will be predictable when Christ will appear. You see how so? Because the events are told, the seasons are given. And the Bible is known of a sense the second death hath no power over us. stand. Now, church, I'm, I'm pushed for time. But let me tell you what happened. If you want to get some idea what I'm talking about, folks, go back to the book of Daniel. Look, look at the book of Daniel. Look at the book of Daniel. I'm talking about Daniel, you're walking into a lion's den. I said footprints going in, but none coming out. Will you come out? Daniel, the Lord knows. Church, the only guy who ever went in a lion's den and came alive was the footprints of Daniel. The only man who went to death and hell and preached to people in hell and come back out alive was Jesus Christ. The only person that went to a lake of fire and came out alive was Shadrach, Meshach, and a man he go. Right. And the only person that could go to death Hell in the grave and come back alive and said, I'm alive forevermore. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus Christ. Amen. That's right. Amen. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I felt in the spirit when the world heard that Jesus Christ is alive. Caesar was confounded. Mm -hmm. oh my. Skeptics was dumbfounded. Devils were horrified. Rome was stupefied. Jews were petrified, and the saints were glorified, and God was justified. Yes. Amen. Amen. And Jesus was magnified, and believers were sanctified, and death was penalized, and the apostles were gratified. Can you clap your hands? The first time he came, to a manger. Next time he go to a kingdom. Yeah. First time he came ordinary. Next time he missed the extraordinary. The first time he was proud, but he came with a public second time. What was concealed the first time will be revealed the last time. I know what Jesus Christ coming. Why is he coming? To show the world who only have potentate. The only one with mortality. Immortality. Over power, doing a life that no man can approach it. Can he imagine the shock on their faces when they realize what was concealed and now revealed? The glory he once had was hidden, but now be revealed. Amen. Amen. They wagged their heads at him and mocked him. Now they're going to have to worship him. Hello. Amen. In that day, Zechariah 14 and 6 says, There shall be one Lord and his name, what? One. one. This Lord told Jesus had to come, Mr. Immortality. Hello! He was crucified to come magnified. Yes. And death petrified. I'm asking you this morning, are you a part of that purchase? That purchase transaction. You see, Joseph was purchased by Pharaoh. And Joseph was not allowed to go back home. You are not allowed to go back to the devil. Amen. When Joseph got enthroned and wore that seal, signal ring of the king, it means now you belong to Egypt. You belong to Pharaoh. Amen. Amen. He went and buried his dad, but he couldn't leave yet to die in Egypt. But here to be the church, to say, look, I know I have to die here, I purchased, but please. Do me a favor. Messiah is coming. Yes. A Savior is coming. Amen. 
And when he come, I'll be bold in the grave. But when you're crossing Jordan, take my bones with you. And don't leave it when you go to the promised land. The church, that Savior was Moses. Our Savior is Jesus Christ. Amen. And all the saints that died up to this point, their bones are not going to be left in Egypt. Right. It will go with his body. Yes. Would you close your eyes right now? Hallelujah. Thank you. As I have said, together with my dead body shall he live. I wonder if somebody here right now, you want to change ownership. This great transaction is taking place. And you can become a purchased possession. Every time you speak in tongues, that's not your mother's tongue. It's your father's tongue. Having the language as a spirit of utterance. Every time you breathe in the Holy Ghost and you feel the quick the spirit, it's reminding you this is not your home. Your quickening spirit. You might be taken up to be with Jesus. I want to ask you right now. Oh, are you ready? To be purchased. Just to know 